I want to talk about something that never gets the attention it deserves. Uranium contamination on the Navajo Nation. I've spent years studying these sites across northern Arizona, and it's personal for me. Today, I want to share with you what I've seen out in the field. Okay, we're going to start it in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. In 1943 and 1944, the United States government began searching for Cold War uranium. The first mines opened near Monument Valley in Cameron, Arizona. Now, you could see we're here at Cameron, right by the Grand Canyon turnoff. So, when you drive to Flagstaff going south, you're going to pass right on by Cameron, Arizona. If you look on the side of the highway, you're going to see multiple buildings here. They're abandoned and they have these murals on them. They're very artistic in style. So you could see on the inside, if you go in one, these different kind of murals and posters in here. It's, it's unique. This is made by a man named Chip Thomas. I actually went to school with Chip's son, who was uh, one of my classmates in the class of 2015. Yep, I'm, I'm pretty young. <laughs> so Highway 89, you could see cars are just passing by these places. And now we're going to go to an actual uranium mine near Cameron. You can see this mine is fenced off. It has been uh, cleaned up by the Navajo Nation EPA and the Environmental Protection Agency of the United States. We're gonna be on the outside of this mine. We're gonna stay away from going inside as this is barricaded off and they don't want people in. You could see me in my gas mask and this mine, uranium mines are unique as the radiation itself hitting your body is not really the thing that causes too much of damage at these low doses. It's gonna be the wind. On a windy day like this, you're gonna to have to worry about the dust. You could see the Chen Li formation there in the background. And you could see me here with my gas mask on. I'm more concerned about the dust than anything else. Um, the dust is radioactive and it could get into your lungs, so you gotta watch out for that. This is the Chen Li formation again. You could see that top ginger color layer. That's where the uranium deposit is. It's inside that Chen Li formation on the upper part. The Geiger counter is reading nothing too crazy uh, on the ground. It's about mm, ha maybe a little bit over normal background. But you can kind of see the scope of the mine. There's that Chin Lee I was just talking about in the background. And that's what the miners are looking for when they came out here during the Cold War era. They're looking for that Chin Lee formation and that yellow coating on top. So this is a mine near Cameron. And as you can see, uh, Cameron, Arizona is not too far away from this spot. It's right over there and when this wind blows over here it blows to town so these wells that are out here are the most important thing as you can see the little colorado river which feeds into the main colorado river of the grand canyon is right here and you have to worry about groundwater with these wells <laughs> here we are so this is one of chip thomas's murals of a navajo miner actually in a uranium mine Navajo miners were affected by uranium in the federal government and also their employers never told them the dangers that actually would occur inside of a uranium mine with radon gas. Uh, these roadside sites that ship has actually muraled is really artistic and it's nice. And as you can see, people just drive right on by these radioactive sites. You can see a little bit of signage here and uh, people just, just drive on by and not even stop at this site. Okay, we're going to be heading to Tuba City, Arizona. You can see an abandoned building over here. It looks like a schoolhouse. <laughs> Tuba City was abandoned. Uh, well, it's still operating, but after the uranium mine boom ended, a lot of the houses were abandoned and uh, filled with asbestos, and there was no point in remediating them. You can see here a uh, attention downwinders. So the downwinders are when they were testing atomic weapons out in Nevada. So those atomic weapons actually blew radioactive clouds across the desert of Utah, Arizona, and Colorado. And there was compensation for them. Along with that, Navajos were also affected by the mines themselves, not just the fallout. So it was a double whammy. Okay, all right, here we go. We're going to Tuba City outside of it. This is Rare, Rare Metals, Arizona. You can see it's managed by the Department of Energy. The Department of Energy used to be the uh, Atomic Energy Commission who was in charge of detonating and, and nuclear weapons. So Rare Metals is an interesting site. You could see water in the background. This is the main concern at Rare Metals is that it has water contamination from this tailings pile, which I'll show you here in just a second. So this tailing pile is uranium leftovers from milling. So you make it concentrate and uh, you have leftovers and they were just out in the open for years. You could see it's been covered up by uh, tons and tons of rocks and rubble. And this is huge. This is a huge uranium deposit area. 
Um, so this is a tailings pile that's been covered up and remediated by the U.S. Department of Energy and they are in charge of cleaning it up and managing this site and the groundwater is the biggest problem here. Then uh, actually people used to live here on site. These are the foundations of the housing. This is the housing people lived in when they worked at Rare Metals and it was so contaminated they had to destroy the housing out here. Okay, we have a typical windmill you will see on the Navajo Nation. This is where um, water is pumped out of the ground with these windmills. And groundwater, like I keep saying, is the biggest issue when it comes to uranium mining out here on the reservation. Navajo Nation strictly relies on groundwater. Very little of it is pumped in. And uh, these people have to use it for their livestock and they're using it for their own housing. Okay, so we're actually jumping ahead here to Mexican Hat, Utah. You could see this is near Halchita, Arizona, and you're gonna see a uranium deposit site, the Mexican Hat Uranium Tailings Repository. This is also managed by the Department of Energy, and it's another major uh, depository from all the uranium mine, mining that happened in Utah. They would bring it here to this site, and they would also uh, make it concentrate, yellow cake. So I am right on the boundary of where you could get in here, and, and it's a barbed wire fence where I'm stopped at. Nothing too crazy. I didn't jump a fence to sneak in here. I'm right at the site where you can actually go. And... As you can see, uh, it's just rock piles. It's it's crazy to see up close. There's the fence I was just talking about, and the uh, Geiger counter I had in my hand wasn't going off too much. Like I said, when you're around these sites, it's not really the radiation that's hitting you. It's actually the contamination in the ground. So there is the headstone for the Mexican hat uranium depository, and that's the grave they've set on it. So a lot of people still come out here. As you can see, some people party out here. Uh, this could be just trash thrown off the side of the road, but. This is the spot to be if you want to hide out because no one's going to be coming over here looking for anything. And uh, we're in Hell Cheetah now, Hell Cheetah. You can see it's recreation center in that depository right behind it. And this, this depository is less than a mile away. This community's rec center is right next to it. And it's interesting to see how uh, insane it is that this area is just right here and people live here. And you can see it's a little uh, run down. Economic growth is a little bit of a struggle out here. You know, uh, resource development was the only thing really supporting these communities. We have a monocline where the uh, San Juan River cuts through, and you can see below the uh, depository. In the horizon is Mexican Hat, Utah, over there, that little town. And you could see the Manti LaSalle's over there um, near Monticello. I think that's what those are. I don't think they're the Henry Mountains, but yeah, Monument Valley to our left, Halchita right there in the center. Nice view during sunset. I'm on top of the hill above town. And you can see this community. People are living at these sites still. There's, it's, it's their land. This is their spot, you know. And, and they have to live with the legacy. And you can see the legacy is just right there. It's, it's, it's there. It's real. And these people are dealing with this. And, and groundwater is absolutely the most crucial thing that is, is sacred to the Navajo, not only land. So, all right, we're gonna jump ahead here. The, this is what I wanted to show you is that this is a actual tailings pile. So the Mexican hat mill, the Tuba City mill, this is what it would look like if it wasn't remediated. So we're on top of an actual uh, tailings pile right here. So this is a little somewhat different. It's a heap leach pile where they're uh, putting sulfuric acid into the soil. You can see this outwash here, really, really interesting colors we're seeing there. And it's obviously looks uh, toxic, of course and outwash over here and you can see the plastic layer is is barely doing anything it, this is obviously 60 70 year old plastic lining that's just been out in the elements and there's no trespassing sign no dangerous signs nothing to stop anybody from coming out here if you were just a wanderer you would think this is just a uh, waste pile of some sort like a construction pile you wouldn't even really know unless you knew the site and knew what was here better view of the heap leach pile and how big it is it's it's massive it's a massive chunk of just toxicity just out here and uh, the biggest problem it's uh, contaminating the creek Fry Canyon Creek so it's uh, sad to see that this site since it's so isolated is really getting no uh, remediation so it's not really a big deal apparently to I believe the Bureau of Land Management which owns it it's not really on the priority list because it's gonna cost millions of dollars to clean this up you could see that heap leach pile, the uh, sulfuric acid would drain into these uh, pond areas over here, and you can see the piping and stuff like that. Okay, we're gonna jump to Energy Fuels. This is White Mesa Mill in Utah. Energy Fuels Incorporated is a company that actually uh, gets the uranium, uh, uh, it's like the uh, waste, and they concentrate it and turn it into uh, actual fissile material. And uh, uh, 
You can see the Grand Canyon here. I don't mean to get stumbled up, but there's a lot with Energy Fuels Incorporated. It's an interesting company. Um, they're doing rare metals, and you can see they actually have a, uh, a mine that's active on the rim of the Grand Canyon on the south rim in the Coconino National Forest, Pinion Plain Mine. So I went to the mine right on the fence line. You could see here, right at the fence, we're entering the mine. It's a national forest land, land that is sacred to the Havasupai tribe, I should mention. And these are uh, the ponds that they're uh, pulling up groundwater. And the groundwater they were concerned about because it was filling their caverns and their adits um, in the uranium deposits. You can see they're trying to keep out wildlife. Uh, the Grand Canyon Trust was complaining that wildlife are going in there and actually going in and drinking that water. And I'm on the outside of it checking the radiation levels. And obviously on the outside, you're not going to really get too much radiation. The, uh, the deposits are obviously underground at this site compared to what I just showed you what was above ground. More, more areas of rock, animals coming in, and I keep saying it over and over, but it's really the biggest problem is the groundwater. Water is sacred, you know, out here in the desert. And having it contaminated is the biggest problem because all this water actually seeps into the porous sandstone, then into the limestone, then goes into the uh, Havasupai drinking water. It's possible that it could uh, contaminate their areas because the hydrology of the Grand Canyon is, is unique and we don't know too much about it, believe it or not. So that's the Navajo Nation. I wanted to show everybody these kind of sites. I've been holding onto this footage for a long time and it's about time I get it out there. And I hope everybody kind of learned something and kind of could see. I know it's a fast video and I'm off script. I'm just kind of going with the flow here, but groundwater, sacred, important. Navajo Nation, Havasupai, these people are, are dealing with it every single day of their lives. We're, we're driving right on by on the highway, not even really noticing it. But these people have to live with it. So good shout out to Chip. Good job with the murals. Very beautiful, awesome artistic detail. Amazing. Guys, like and comment this video. Get it out there. Let other people see it. It really helps me out a lot so we can send it. Have a good day.